what you're seeing on the screen now is the face of an Indian scammer on his local billboard. And today he will be seeing and reacting to this exposing piece of art. This guy's name is Sujoy P and what you're seeing on the screen right now is his webcam feed as I was able to reverse the connection when he attempted to scam me. This guy is working from a small residential apartment in the outskirts of the city of Kolkata in eastern India and he is stealing money from people as he tries his best to impersonate a well-trained professional bank employee. Okay and one more thing, one more thing. Uh, <laughs> and don't discuss any match with anyone, okay? <laughs> As you could have probably seen by now, he is not very professional and is in fact part of a larger scamming group consisting of 29 fraudsters that are spread out across West Bengal as they all sit and scam people from the comfort of their own home. The way they communicate with each other is through Telegram where they have a team, a group chat with all 29 members of this scam gang. And these people are divided in three sections. We have 17 call openers or Microsoft employees. 10 closers or bank employees that they refer to as subs, which stands for supervisors. And these bank employees also work for Microsoft as openers. But as soon as a victim is hooked by another opener, the call is transferred to them. They change out their Microsoft uniform and all of a sudden work for the bank. Thanks for being on hold. This is Daniel Wilson. How may I help you? This is Daniel Wilson. Thanks for being on hold. My name is Daniel Wilson. I'm the senior investigator officer from the CIBC headquarter, Toronto. Going back to this hierarchy sheet, above the 12 subs, there are two bosses, with both of them being responsible for laundering money, managing the phone systems, and also making sure that the agents are doing their job. We will get to them in a second. First, I wanted to find out more about the guy that I had access to, and when I noticed he was using a laptop, I was pretty tempted to open the webcam to see who I was dealing with. But before I mess anything up, let's make sure he doesn't notice the camera turning on by typing in a command to find out the make and model of his machine. And what do you know, the user manual tells us that this laptop unfortunately has a bright indicator light. In the scammer's telegram chats, I also found a picture of his device where we can clearly see this light as well. And so he will definitely be alerted of my presence when I try to get a picture of him. We have seen before what happens when I do this. So let's not try that again. I do know his webcam is on tape, that's when he was AFK I checked, and I want to keep it that way so that later in this video, when I confront him with his own local billboard, we can get a live reaction straight from this built-in video capture device. It wasn't an issue anyway for me to find out what he looks like, as his hard drive contained over 2,000 pictures, of which more than 400 of himself. Wow, this guy is vain. Other interesting flicks contained personal documents, which allowed me to build a profile for the man responsible of stealing more than $500,000 a year from innocent people, according to his own records. First of all, we have his Adar identity card that shows me his full name is Sujoy, born on the 1991, making him 33 years of age. We can also see his Adar or social security number and on the back is his home address in Batpara, just outside of Kolkata. Unfortunately, this address does not contain any house number, but luckily for some reason his electricity bill has the exact coordinates of his house. And then this order of some headphones also gave me his phone number, which belongs to the same name according to Truecaller. Then I also found his tax identification card, a bank check with routing details, medical records, plane, train and bus tickets, his learner's license, COVID vaccination and credit card information, including the three funny numbers on the back. Then he also had about 300 pictures of his girlfriend and soppy videos of them together. <clears throat> right, amazing. Since I had access to this guy's device, I decided to create a remote desktop session and thoroughly search his Telegram chats and what I found was pretty shocking as the first thing I noticed was that these scammers have a group chat where they share their dispositioning, which in simple terms means that they give their boss a reason why their call was not successful and a lot of the time they use this group as a sort of rage room to get rid of the anger caused by victims not falling for their tricks. See, these guys get paid a salary but the majority 
majority of their income stems from incentive or bonus money that they get as a percentage of their total stolen funds. It varies per scam group how much this is, but typically these sorts of scammers make more money from sales than from their base salary. And so when people don't wish to fall for their malicious sales pitch, they can get very nasty in this group chat and write things like, After knowing that her card information got compromised, she started crying like a baby and she told me that she can't do anything. His Dracula sounded wife yelling at him said hang up the call. No cell, stupid. She has been scammed before by gift cards but somehow I convince her to do this investigation. Less chance she will go. What we have just now seen is completely unnecessary and this incentive culture has programmed these agents to be ruthless and squeeze every last penny out of their every victim. And then they said, well, why do you need to withdraw for that much money? Okay, 6,300, right? You're doing a good job. You don't tell them it's a good job. Go to that, go to the same place that you visit yesterday. 050-885, right? Yeah, that I'm saying. Six that i'm saying okay take the new one take the other card on your hand no you need, you need to open the packet so make it quick make it quick can you just make it quick yes read read back to me uh 15 minutes is already done now you can go back to that sobeys and try to get another card okay the 50 minutes done not only does the person stealing the gift cards get an incentive, also the opener that gave him the call gets a bonus when money is stolen. And so once the closer makes his sale, the opener is more than happy to thank him for securing a bonus for him. But when the closer doesn't succeed, the opener falls into a deep pit of sadness, knowing that he is reliable on another incompetent piece of work to get food on his plate. No sales equals no money to eat, according to this scammer. In their Telegram chats and Sujoy's notes, we can also see that as these guys pretend to be from the bank, they also collect personal information on the victim and they even go as far as writing down the card details for every person that they try and swindle. The victim is convinced that the bank employee has cancelled this card, but in reality it is still active and it could very well be possible that they have a second business model of selling the victim's data and credit card details to other scammers too. This wouldn't be the first time that this happens as there are entire Facebook communities designed for scammers to communicate with each other and sell information of previous scam victims and information from data leaks. To prevent the information of my viewers circulating in these sorts of group chats, I have set up an extensive partnership with the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Aura is an award-winning application that monitors and protects its users from identity theft, credit fraud and online threats by surveying your information against billions of data points. For the average consumer, it it is impossible to see when and where your information gets leaked and yes it is very likely to happen to anyone as in 2022 only in the US there were already 1802 data breaches leaking the information of over 400 million people from the likes of Uber, Cash App and Microsoft that we all use every day. Aura will make sure to inform you of any breaches and will also cover any damages as a result of identity theft with their insurance of $1 million per adult on your plan for up to five people. And their app also comes with a password manager and antivirus all in one, which you can get an exclusive deal on through my link, aura.com slash scambaiter. My link will offer a 14 day free trial, which is risk free with Aura's 60 day money back guarantee. So make sure you go to the link in the description, aura.com slash scambaiter to get a free trial so you can make sure that your information isn't publicly available to scammers and hackers. Anyways, I was just talking about the opener and closer feeling to steal some money, but of course the bosses with their 99% share in those funds also want to optimize the income. And they try to achieve this by writing things like, will transfers come or will we remain sitting like this to which the agents reply that they are trying their hardest but the boss is not happy with this and writes i simply don't care about this trying sh at the end of the month i will also simply tell you i cannot fully pay your salary so who are these bosses well the only communication channel that they have with their employees is through telegram and telegram is known for being used by people that wish to remain anonymous this wish for anonymity is clear for both bosses as they have set a self-destructed timer that deletes all private messages after 24 hours the only thing that i could find about boss number one is that his nickname is awara and his indian number is there 
but it is registered under the name incognito mode. Very diligent. He does speak Bengali with Sujoy, so I'm assuming that he also lives in West Bengal. And in one of these conversations in Bengali, we can see that Sujoy refers to the other boss, who goes by the nickname Waz, as Wasim. So that is most likely his real name. The other conversations are mostly Sujoy sending over gift cards and the boss saying that they were redeemed. And this is part of basically all scam call centers that we don't get to see. But I do know that these gift cards are sold on either A, a peer-to-peer -peer crypto platform where people buy gift cards for crypto, or B, directly to a guy that buys gift cards for cryptocurrency. Most of the people buying these gift cards are located in call centers in China that specialize in redeeming gift cards. They buy them at a discount from scammers and then send them over to their associates in the US who buy products with them in stores and resell them for a profit. Either way, the scammers have nothing to do with this redemption process. They don't care what happens with the cards as long as they get their percentage, which they usually get a few minutes after sending the cards over. At the end of each working day, these scam employees share their earnings of that day so that the bosses can keep up who stole what for incentives. And we can see that in a randomly selected five days that they stole 81,700 Canadian dollars as they only scam Canadian people. That means $16,340 per day and their working week is six days, so about 100k Canadian stolen per week. All of this money is exclusively taken through gift cards, and I have no clue how this is possible, as the script that these guys have is actually surprisingly terrible, and probably one of the worst ones I have ever come across, but somehow it actually works. Let's give this monstrosity a quick listen. It was an international transfer, and this is the $1300. This money is no more longer in our bank, not not even in our country. I like to speak with that US merchant directly, so by the help of them, it will be possible to cancel this transaction. This guy is doing a whole load of waffling, so let me quickly break down what he's actually saying. They cannot allow to cancel this transaction at this moment. Here is a lady, she belongs from our Canada. Her name is Olivia Smith. Inside of this two store computer, we find out your card information. The computer can be used by the store people only. This is the reason we have some doubt against the manager and the cashier of this store. We like to do a small investigation inside of that store. We need our cancel card because by the help of the cancel card, it is possible we can block all of the access from their system and we can able to know who are the people are access this card information. All right, so it's an international transfer, but it happened in the local store by the local workers, right? Okay. And you know the name of the hacker, but the victim still needs to buy tracking gift cards to find out who did it. And the body tracking gift cards, they need to use their old card. But Sujo, I swear five minutes ago, you said that you had already canceled that card for them. It just doesn't make sense. Well, at least to some people it did. And when Sujo was getting near to a successful close, I would always try my best to step in and save the victim. It's an international fraud. It's a fraud activity, ma'am. Please be serious. It's a fraud activity. It's happening. Hello? Hello. Yes, hi, Miss. Hello. Mar yes, Miss Margaret, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to warn you because I do scam investigations. I make documentaries about scams, and they are trying to steal money from you. They are not actually with your bank, okay? Everything that they said to you, so that there is um, there's a charge on your account, all those kind of things that they told you is fake. It's a fake story. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So again, if somebody calls you, please do not pick up the call and just try to call your bank's official phone number and ask them just to confirm that nothing um, weird is going on with your account again. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Right. For Have a nice day. Bye bye. The bank. Sorry. So call another number. I'm sorry, man. Hello. Faltu customer. Faltu faltu customer transfer kuchche basa basa. In my latest video, I got scammers arrested in POV live on camera. Make sure you check out that video in the description if you haven't already. But to come up with something that is equally as crazy was pretty difficult. I wanted to definitely confront this guy with his own face and thought of a creative way to make sure that his heart would drop to his ass.
All right, let me get to the point. What was the plan? Well, I wanted to put Sujoy on his local billboard to expose to the people around him that he has taken money from innocent victims. I have his exact coordinates thanks to the electricity bills, so I thought it would be a good plan to rent out the closest billboard to his location and expose his fraudulent activities. I started doing research on outdoor advertising in Bapara and found some options like wall wraps, banners, and bus advertising, but this was not what I was looking for. It turns out that the city of Bapara doesn't really offer any hoardings, unipoles, or billboards for outsiders to advertise on. This is really only a phenomenon in larger cities, and the closest large city to Bhatpara is Kolkata. He won't be driving past it, but I can send someone to go and film the advertisement and then confront him directly with the video on his device, which also gives us the opportunity to get his first reaction live on webcam. I tried getting in touch with a few advertising agencies in Kolkata and whilst I was waiting for them to reply to me I started working on the billboard's design and decided to go with a very simple to understand piece of work in which we can see Sujoy's face stating about himself that he is a scammer along with a message to the local police to come arrest him with the address of where to knock on the door. After a week or so I got a reply from one marketing company that gave me all the options that they had available in the coming weeks and now it was up to me to decide where Sujoy Joy's face was going to be publicized. Ever wondered what a billboard in India will cost you? Well, the ones that I was interested in were going for $3,500, and this will get you a 144 square feet design being put on display for the default rental period of 30 days. That is very expensive, I know, but thanks to Aura, I could facilitate such a high traffic billboard, and I sent my choice to the marketing company, along with the design of Sujoy's expose as well. I was excited to get this done, but it very quickly became clear that the market agency was not a fan and they fully blacklisted me from doing any promotions in Kolkata. Looking back it might have been a bit delusional thinking that they were going to accept anything remotely close to my concept so I had to take that one on the chin and come up with a solution for this. I already had the plan to confront him with a video of the actual billboard so how about a deep fake? We will still get him to shit his pants, the only difference is, is that he will not be publicly shamed to his local people. Oh well. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the deepfake video of an actual billboard and there's no way that he will be able to tell that this is fake when all of a sudden his laptop stops working, a video of his own face on a billboard pops into his screen and he hears my voice trying to confront him. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Hey Sujoy. Hey Sujoy, can you hear me? Hey Sujoy, why are you scamming people, buddy? Sujoy, can you hear me? Why are you scamming people, buddy? What's, what's going on, man? Why are you scamming people? I can hear you, by the way. You can speak to me. Why are you scamming people? I can hear you, by the way. You can speak to me. Why are you scamming people? Hey, Sujoy, can you speak to me for a second? Hey, Sujoy. <laughs> oh, no, I hurt myself. He smashed, he smashed the laptop. No, bro, he didn't say anything. He was just looking at, at his screen like, what? And he was taking a picture as well. He got his phone first thing, of course. Nah, that's definitely going to his boss. Like, look what's going on on my screen. Nah, you could see it in his eyes. He was scared, bro. Right? He couldn't even talk. He forgot how to speak English. All of a sudden, he didn't want no smoke. After this, I decided to destroy the scam phone system so that they can no longer continue stealing money from people and Sujoy never came back online. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe before clicking off. If you want to buy me a coffee, there's a Patreon and PayPal link in the description. I hope you guys have a nice day. Stay safe, stay cautious. Bye-bye.